Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, our journey continues at our look through ocular anatomy in the different parts of the eye with the conjunctiva. So the conjunctiva is not necessarily a structure that we're going to be talking about a lot about the uh, the mechanisms to vision and how the eye works per se, but it is very important for eye health and it is something that we do talk about in contact lens theory as far as making sure that everything's healthy and ready to fit. And uh, it is somewhat related to vision in the sense that it does contribute to the tear layer, which covers the cornea and is extremely important when it comes to a good refractive service and making sure that we get good vision. So let's jump into a few facts about the conjunctiva and kind of look at how all of this works. So first of all, let's take a look at a diagram of the eye here and you'll notice that it's labeled in different colors. Uh, you'll see here the junction between where we know the cornea is. We've already talked about this. When you're looking at the eye, you see the iris, you see the pupil, but what you're really looking at is the transparent cornea. Now the junction where you see where the iris is ending and where the sclera is beginning, we call that the limbus. And the limbus is a really good kind of uh, our geographical area of the eye that we kind of use as a reference point to be able to say, you know, especially in contact lens fitting or even in eyeglass fitting, uh, when we're fitting bifocals and different things like that, we use the limbus as a common reference point. It's not necessarily a structure that contributes to anything, but it is something that we can use as kind of a map to be able to, you know, distinguish where certain things are going. So the conjunctiva covers the sclera, white part of the eye, and it also lines the inside of the eyelids. And you'll see in this diagram that the eyelid has been kind of pulled back, retracted, and you and you can see that blue area that is part of the conjunctiva. Uh, the portion which covers the sclera, it's called the bulbar conjunctiva, that purple area, while the portion which covers the inner lids is called the palpebral. Now, anything palpebral refers to eyelids, and we're going to talk about that in more detail when we do our chapter or our lecture on the eyelids. And the junction between the two, so between the bulbar and the palpebral conjunctiva, is called the fornix conjunctiva, where the two meet. Uh, so just... One thing to kind of consider here is that these aren't necessarily separate structures. They're just different regions of the same structure. So the way the conjunctiva works is kind of like a thin mucous membrane that covers the sclera, kind of loops around and covers the eyelids in all one continuous piece, kind of like a safety net, which let's talk about exactly what its function is <clears throat> and we'll see that it kind of does operate like a safety net. So the primary purpose of the conjunctiva is to provide lubrication through mucus production and immune surveillance to help prevent microbes from entering the eye. Immune surveillance is a fancy word meaning kind of like a safety net making sure that dust, debris, bacteria, uh, microbes, anything cannot enter the eye. It makes the eye a sealed socket so that Anything that comes from the outside world can't penetrate inside the orbit, which is basically the bone structure that holds the eye and the adnexa and all the other parts, things we will talk about. And it also makes sure that everything <clears throat> is properly protected and sealed in. Now, the conjunctiva is highly vascularized. We already talked about this, lots of blood vessels, and it derives its blood supply from the ophthalmic and the carotid arteries. And these blood vessels are highly visible when the conjunctiva is inflamed, uh, which is the case in conjunctivitis. So this is something that we will talk about in more detail throughout future lectures. However, because it's the safety net, right? It's always up front and center. It's always protecting the eye from different things. It is quite common for that conjunctiva to get a little bit pink, to get inflamed, to even get red. Uh, we, you know, conjunctivitis, commonly called pink eye. This isn't necessarily a horrible thing. This is actually a sign that the conjunctiva is doing what it's supposed to do. It's actually protecting the eye from all this bad stuff that's trying to get in it. So um, an important concept 
of course, as an optician, is to be able to recognize when a normal conjunctiva, clear, you can you can barely see it's there, versus an inflamed one where the v blood vessels are much more visible and you know have a pink hue over the eye. And it's not actually the sclera, the white part that's actually getting pink and, and, and huey, it's actually the conjunctiva's blood vessels, which are filled with blood, and it's contributing to this immune response, trying to combat whatever's in the eye. And really, that's pretty much all we need to know about the conjunctiva at this point. Um, it's an important structure, you know, we've talked about how it maintains ocular health. However, as far as, you know, in our day-to-day -day routines, we're not doing a whole lot other than being able to recognize what a healthy conjunctiva looks like versus a not so healthy one. So, of course, as always, what is the significance here for us as opticians? Uh, first thing is that the orbit is sealed. It's a sealed structure. Nothing can get behind. This is a common thing that patients, even students, worry about, especially in contact lens fitting. They say, well, what happens if my lens displaces and rolls behind my eye and into my brain and I've got all these problems? None of that's going to happen. The entire structure is sealed not from the eye to the eyelid, it's like a perfect loop that completely seals everything in, so you never have to worry about anything getting behind the eye. Uh, the conjunctiva, I've repeated it multiple times, is the safety net, which keeps potential hazards out. Microbes, dust, debris, anything, it's there to protect. Uh, and it's commonly irritated. Conjunctivitis is a very common thing. And sometimes, you know, there's different levels, different varying degrees of conjunctivitis. There's different causes, you know, bacterial, viral. There could be allergic conjunctivitis they all resemble each other with little nuances, little different symptoms that will be able to allow the doctor to be able to distinguish what the root cause is. But at the end of the day, conjunctivitis is ultimately a sign that the eye is doing its job and the, the conjunctiva is doing its job of protecting the other parts of the eye from any kind of infections and things like that. Um, and, you know, one little thing, and this is something that comes with experience, with confidence, you need to know when the conjunctiva is just mildly inflamed, uh, could just be a mild irritant, or to know when to refer. You know, obviously, and we're going to talk about this in more detail, but obviously things like discharge, pain, irritation is cause for concern and should be referred. Uh, one of the trickiest things as an optician, especially as a new optician, is to know when not to refer. And I'm not going to give too much insight on that right now because it, it is quite tricky because you never want to be wrong and tell somebody it's okay, uh, you don't need to go see the doctor. So for the time being, I think the best thing to do is to understand the difference between healthy and not. And then, you know, uh, even though, even if you're wrong, it's better to be on the safer side and to refer to the appropriate professionals to be able to take a look and distinguish whether or not this is something concerning or it's just something that will pass on its own. So that pretty much does it for the conjunctiva for the time being. Uh, pretty simple stuff, at least, but that's just one more piece of the puzzle that you now have. You now understand what this important structure does, and we're going to move on to the next one. All right, see you in the next slides.